the DIY designer. If this is your first video and you've never seen my show, welcome, what's up? My name is Orly. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we've got a really, really fun episode today. Every week I do really fun DIY fashion and I'm a self-taught designer, so a lot of what I'm teaching you guys is things that I've just learned through trial and error, making my clothes since I was a little kid, and I love it so much. It is truly my passion, my joy, teaching it to you guys and getting the feedback when you actually do the projects and you share that with me. Man, I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Um, so I'm really excited. For today's video, we have a like, show-stopping, fabulous, sexy, shake your booty movement, layered fringe skirt. It's a really long title, but it's totally worth it. I was just planning on buying one, but all of the versions that I saw that were like good, like really good, were so expensive. And all the versions that are kind of recreations from more like fast fashion or affordable brands were not good. They were just like wimpy looking. I wanted like a major fringe moment. So that's what we're gonna make today. It's gonna be totally no sew, although I will explain to you guys how you can do it if you wanna sew. I do wanna take a minute though to thank Skillshare for making today's video possible. I am so grateful that they are helping me bring this content to you, because like I said, I love it so much, so it really does mean a lot to me. I mentioned that I'm self-taught. Now, I took sewing classes when I was a little kid, but other than that, I never went to fashion school. I've just learned through acquiring knowledge and education wherever I could get it. And that's why I think Skillshare is just such a great option. I use it when I need to learn certain techniques for sewing, learning how to use your sewing machine, or you can take sewing classes that will teach you the basics, just so that you can actually start making your own clothing. I use it a lot for video production. I recently produced a, uh, it's called a sizzle reel, in the biz. I produced a sizzle reel for a friend of mine wanting to create a cooking show for him. And I use Skillshare to figure out how to create a sizzle reel that you could then pitch to a network. So there are never ending classes that you can take. It really is just about increasing your education in the categories that you care about. So I want you guys to head over to Skillshare right now, click the search button, search topics that you're interested in so you can see all of the courses and curriculums that are available. You guys can use the link. I've got it in the top line of my description to get two months free. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Thank you Skillshare for making this one possible and let's get right into materials because they are gorgeous. one option I had. I went to Forever 21. It was a good color. The real issue is that it had a zipper in the front. I was going to see the zipper in the front and that doesn't really work all that great with the fringe. The fringe is going to prevent the skirt from stretching. So you need something with a zipper but in the front was not good. Then I grabbed this one which they only had in a size large so it was like low waisted on me. I didn't really love that but it did have a zipper in the back. Then honestly if I could have gotten this in a pencil skirt I would have done it. I saw this plaid and I was like that would actually be really dope. Having the fringe, when it moves, that you see like a fall plaid underneath. The only thing is that you can see it's like flary. It's the technical term. So I bought all of these skirts and then I did a last minute Hail Mary at the thrift store. <laughs> And I found the perfect skirt. It was a little big on me, so I took it in just a little bit. And this is really the kind of skirt that you're gonna want. All right, so we're gonna get started. And the first thing you wanna do is take your fringe and start at the very top. We're gonna work our way backwards. I know that I want to embed each length about an inch and a half to two inches in the first length above it. So I just put my fringe in place and kind of eyeball where I wanna start it. Then I put a little marking and I took a ruler and I measured how far apart that was. That was five and a half inches. So I'm sliding my ruler down on each marking and measuring five and a half inches apart from each other. I did it all down the center and so now I'm just doing it on either side. So on the right side and the left side so that I can connect those lines. If you have one of those curved rulers, this is probably where you'd want to use it. I don't, so I'm just connecting it and eyeballing it, slightly rounding it out to follow the shape of the skirt and the natural slope of the body. Connect all of your lines once you do your front. I'd recommend connecting the lines from the front across to the back so you can skip that whole measurement. Just use those lines as a guide and go around to your side seams. Now all you have to do is put the measurements for your center back because obviously you can connect them with the ones you did on the sides. So same exact thing, front and back. Now we have our guide for where our fringe is gonna go. This skirt has a slit, so I need to make sure to leave the slit open. 
The first time I did it, I folded over the edges of my fringe and I'll explain why I realized that was a mistake. But basically start on the very bottom. You always start on the bottom, put a nice thin line of your Fabri-Tac glue and lay your fringe on it. You're gonna wanna tug at the skirt to make sure the skirt is laying evenly and the fringe is laying evenly and nothing is kind of accidentally puckering. Again, nice thin line all the way across the line that you created. And as you go, you're just gonna wanna ensure that the pieces of fringe are not getting caught up in the fabric glue. So just kind of use your hand to pull it away, pull it towards the bottom, lay it down nice and level, tug on the edges to make sure that it's all perfectly even and there's no puckering. Let it dry for about 20 to 30 seconds, flip it over and do the other side. Now. When you get to the very edge, again, you can see I'm cutting it just about a half an inch over so that I can do that little fold over. Again, I will explain why that was a mistake, but that's not the right way to go. So this is what it looks like with single layer, which is not that great. This is the thing I was noticing with a lot of the skirts that I wanted to buy. As a way to save materials and make it cheaper, they did single layer and it just didn't look as beautiful and heavy. So we're gonna do double layer. You can see I'm just adding the glue directly on top of the binding of the fringe layer that is already in place directly on top you don't need to stagger it put it right on there lay it flat press it into place and now when I hold it up you can see the weight the sort of saturation of it is so much stronger and it makes such a huge difference so now I'm moving on to my second layer here you can see I did it single layer and that is because when you fold that little end right I was like folding it and creating a clean finish edge when you do two of those on top of each other you end up with four layers of fringe right at that that top spot and it just kind of puckers it doesn't look great so single layer works the other option here on the slit is to actually start it on the underneath side the wrong side fold it under kind of pinch it and press it into place and then wrap it around the front so you can hide a clean finished edge by going in on the inside you'll see here again in just a second how I did that you can see add a little bit of glue fold it onto the inside of the skirt pinch it and when you lay it flat it's nice and clean finished you just don't want that double up on each side but look at how gorgeous it starts to look when we have the double layer it's so heavy now on this part here this next row i don't have a slit i don't have a zipper i don't have anything so i can just go around and around and around so i always recommend starting in the center back so i'm starting in the center back running all across the front when i get to the center back again i don't need to cut it because there's no slit so i just keep on going now you can see it's the end of my second layer and because i started in the center front uh center back excuse me i need to end in the center back just lay it flat single layer it just disappears when you don't do that little fold over you can't even tell now we're moving up and make sure that you unzip the skirt so that you don't inadvertently zip it closed or get anything in the way so leave it open and you want to give yourself about like an eighth of an inch of distance from the zipper. That way you're easily able to zip open and close the skirt and you're not so close to the edge that it's like impossible to zip it. When you do the second layer, again, you just want it to look nice and flat. This is the part you want to get it as close to the zipper as possible without getting in the way. Now we're doing our last layer. So again, get as close to the zipper as you can, do your first layer, go around and do your second layer. Just made it. I cannot believe I had like a half a yard left. All right, so I bought this stretch velvet ribbon. Again, I cannot believe how lucky I got with the color match. It's insane. But right now I'm just finding the center of the ribbon so that I can put the center of the ribbon on the center of my skirt. And although the ribbon itself is stretchy, I'm not actually utilizing the stretch for the entire skirt. I'm just laying it flat, putting it right into place with the glue to hide our seam. And then on the back, you wanna be about a, an inch shy of the zipper so that when you tie it in a bow, you have room to actually tie it. And that's it guys, we're done. It is like heavy and weighted. You can barely see any of the skirt underneath it, which is what you want with a fringe skirt like this. Now, if you guys wanna sew it, after you do the first layer, you sew it down before you have all the other layers. You can pin it, um, but I would say that's more for an expert sewer who's really comfortable dealing with all the fringe and the pins and all that stuff. If you just glue it down like this, before you do your next layer and before you move up the skirt, make sure that you just simple zigzag stitch, tack it down. 
then you put a little bit more glue, add your second layer, zigzag stitch, tack it down, then you move up. So if you do that layer by layer, it'll be a lot easier because you're not dealing with like other layers of fringe in the way. It's gonna be fabulous. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give me a comment, let me know what you thought, and if you are a new subscriber, please tell me so in the comments so that I can give you a personal thank you. Oh, it just means so much to me. I really appreciate it. I love making these videos and I love each and every one of you that watch it. So I really do appreciate it. All right, let's walk around like a creep in my front yard. Peace out. Maybe I'm a bird.